Is, is this the Bob Ross era of Evil's Fox? I mean... Maybe. I'm obsessed with Dungeons & Dragons miniature painting. Normally, when I fall down these ADHD rabbit holes, I get really invested out of nowhere, waste a lot of money on supplies and setups, integrate it into my studio, start at it, and the dopamine hit from it is fleeting, and I can't get what I want from it. And then I move on and forget about that hobby, never recovering the startup costs or studio space and desperately hoping the spark comes back, well, at least within a year or so. This time, it's different. Well, uh, I hope it's different. It feels different. It, it better be different. I've now had multiple people reaching out following my progress photos with minis, saying that they never would have guessed I'd get into miniature painting, and yet it somehow makes complete sense. It really is a perfect storm of my interests in 3D printing, painting, and art in general, Dungeons and Dragons, and fantasy. Thing is, I suck at painting. I've been an artist and a creator my entire life, and I've always loved painting, but I've never really been good at it. That's why, despite the crazy art setup tours I've posted, I've never really shared much of my painting. I mostly stick to abstract work and spray paint projects, yet somehow, I've actually been impressed with my skills with miniatures. This is the first one I painted. I didn't repaint it, I didn't spend weeks on it, just a couple hours a night after grinding at work all day to decompress, spread over three days. Watching tutorials and guides as I went, it may not be a work of art, it may not be the best, but for my very first one, as my own harshest critic, I'm pretty freaking stoked on this guy. I've since gone on to paint five more, actually, I think we're at eight more minis since then, of varying sizes and styles, probably more by the time this video is fully shot and posted, and I've gotten faster and mostly better with each one. Miniature painting is like a 3D adult coloring book for me. I've always wanted to make awesome characters and draw fantasy scenes from my mind, and I just don't have the drawing capacity for it. ADHD makes sticking with learning things that I just can't do normally very tough or impossible, and my drawing skills have hardly evolved past middle school. But these characters are already made, I just have to give life to them. Even better, unlike traditional canvas painting, painting a miniature is a scenario where the tiniest bit of preparation and consideration prevents you from ever being able to ruin it. Mistakes can always be recovered, and entire paint jobs can easily just be redone if needed. I've not had to fully redo a mini yet, but I have made plenty of mistakes on basically every aspect of painting these, and recovering them is easy enough playing some videos or music, applying colors, and turning a bland gray silhouette into a colorful character I can put in my RPG worlds. It's just such a rewarding experience. My wife even pointed out that it gets me in a really nice flow state, which I haven't been able to achieve with my regular work in quite a long time. I've honestly been desperate for a new, consistent creative outlet for a couple years now. This has been a really necessary addition to my life. Even my shaky hands, which tend to make traditional painting and drawing quite difficult haven't been a huge issue. Huge kudos to Black Magic Craft for his videos on painting with shaky hands. Getting a handle and finding a comfy position means that I can paint for hours, and somehow I don't have any of my usual hand aches or cramps that I get after doing just about anything with my hands. What a relief. There's no end to techniques and approaches, orders of operations to mini painting, which means there's always more to learn. But also there's plenty of ways to keep the process fresh and interesting, and that's with me not getting into airbrushing. Not sure I'm ready for that investment, plus I don't have the space yet. I highly recommend checking out creators like Dana Howe, Guberton Hobbies, Whitelock Academy, and Squidmar Miniatures for guides or just process videos on how they paint minis for inspiration and guidance. The difference between the results I've been able to achieve just starting out or from others on the r slash mini painting subreddit versus those who just kind of go at it without any prior education are very different. There's lots of basics like thinning your paints, highlight techniques, and primer application that make a huge difference, though I did do my whole first mini without primer at all and had no real issues. So. It's not always a required, don't get too obsessed with the little details at first. 
One of the cool things about mini painting is that, outside of the cost of the minis, you do not have to spend much on supplies. Dollar store paintbrushes can be fine until you know why you want better ones. Handles can be made from random cork, wood, pill bottles, and so on. Taper glue can be used in place of blue tack, and a paper towel and old fast food container can be a wet palette, and so on. For storage, I picked up this old wooden drawer system from a local peddler's mall with no plan for what it could be used for, and it wound up being perfect for the paints and washes I have now. I'll grow out of it though. My D&D group has been doing some in-person sessions for the first time since the pandemic started, so I've wanted to have minis for the one shot that I'm hosting. This means I've also gotten into making maps and terrain and such too, which I'll show in future videos. In the meantime, I highly recommend giving miniature painting a shot if you ever have the slightest ditch. It seems like one of those tedious things that I would never have the time or patience for, or skill to actually pull off, yet it's one of the most impactful creative outlets I've had in a long time. I'm not fooling myself. I know these aren't the best paint jobs ever, but that's okay. I still really have to work on my line work and my faces, and my shading overall is a struggle bus. Dry brushing just isn't making sense for me. But I'm enjoying it, and the results are more than good enough for normal play minis. The number one issue I see with newbies posting their paint jobs and asking for feedback is that they just lathered on one big coat and gave up. The comment I have in my head each time is, feedback? Yeah, it's not finished. Go finish it, and then it'll be great. Keep going. Layers and layers. Shades and details. You got this. The biggest expense at the moment has been acquiring minis. I had a small collection of older minis built up from my childhood D&D and Heroescape days, but they were already painted. Still useful for my game sessions, but not for painting. I mean, I could paint over them, but I'm not going to do that. Admittedly, as the intro alluded to, I did wind up doing my usual ADHD splurges at my local game shop and a couple other places to acquire minis to paint up front. Some were official D&D WizKids minis, individually packaged from my local game shop, some were just generic bulk sets on Amazon. You can get some of these bulk packs for far more affordably than the individual official ones, but they do add up. That's where this trip down the hobby rabbit hole had me land on 3D resin printing. I've been 3D printing with standard FDM printers for a couple years now. I love it, but not resin. I got sent the Elegoo Saturn II resin printer back towards the end of 2022 and just never got around to learning it. Life got hectic and it seemed like a lot to get into. And it was. I honestly, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing wrong at this point. This entire half of the screen clearly didn't print, but some of them are going. I guess I'll let it continue. Honestly, most of my experience with it has been an absolute disaster. But I'm finally coming around and had my first wave and a half of successful prints. I've got a couple waves under my belt at this point, and I'm now able to fabricate my own badass minis from the comfort of my own home. If you call wearing lots of protective gear and trying to filter out fumes comfortable. <laughs> this has been awesome to see these appear out of nowhere, piece together unique minis for my players' characters, and so on. Plus, the actual cost to print minis, once you've eaten the cost of the printer, of course, is far, far cheaper than buying them at just a couple dollars per mini in cost versus 5, 10, 15 or more per mini buying them individually. Naturally, I had to sub to all the usual recommended Patreon and My Mini Factory groups doing minis, and there was even a big humble bundle for them as I was writing the script. Hell yeah! This is not smart. Minis you aren't printing are just wasted money. But it's how I do things. It has definitely been a mess getting into it, but I think the results are worth it. I printed these, look at them! And these! And the details on these bases! And this giant guy! And this Hellgate! I am so hyped to start doing big bust or diorama size models just for fun and just to make awesome scenes. And as a comparison, I did have a low quality mini model that was like one tenth of the original size that it was supposed to be. It was clearly designed for FDM 3D printing, so I fired it off on both and... Yeah, it's it's no contest. This would have looked a, a little better with a 0.3 millimeter nozzle, and there's some stuff you can do to basically melt the layer lines together, but it's it's not worth all that. The difference is night and day, even with a really low quality model like this. I had to learn the rules of curing and such, so some of them came out crusty due to not being cleaned well enough, though primer covered them fine. And this big guy here got super brittle from too much curing time, but I'm learning as I go. This is hella rewarding when things are actually going well. 
so well that I've now completely reconfigured this chunk of the studio to accommodate this hobby shift. Yikes. Video linked below if you missed it. I'm sticking to Dungeons & Dragons style fantasy minis for now since that's what I play, but I'd be lying if I said some of the Warhammer style minis weren't appealing just from an aesthetic perspective, so maybe I'll pick up some from that area too. Try new things, take on new hobbies, find new ways to express yourself, and have fun. My latest obsession is D&D miniature painting, and I'm so grateful I have this in my life now. Remember to be kind, rewind.